I'm reviewing Spider-Man Web of Shadows from 2008, the video game, and Spider-Man, the anime series titled Spider-Man, that aired from 1994 to 1998, for five seasons straight. And also, Spider-Man and his amazing friend, that, that's a tie-in to another series titled Spider-Man, that are connected to each other. And Spider-Man Amazing Friends and the other Spider-Man show called Spider-Man uh, came out in the 80s. 1981 exactly. Both series. Spider-Man Amazing Friends and also Spider-Man. Not the 1994 Spider-Man. The other Spider-Man. This is our earlier show and uh so I'm going to review all these, and uh, Spider-Man and his main friend ran, f ran to 1981, and was aired in 1981, the same year that uh, Spider-Man, 1981 Spider-Man, which saw all these are cartoon shows, by the way, all the ones I mentioned in this video, and... Apparently, Spider-Man from 1981 only got one season, looks like, and he aired till 1982. And Spider-Man and his amazing friends had three seasons, which is funny because it was nearly half as good a show as the predecessor was. That's also a Titan. You know, the other one. I'm, I'm not sure which came and came on first. We got honestly, uh, I'm being honest with you. Uh, this one was a better show. Yeah, the less quality show got a longer run. That was you swipe in as a friend. That ran for three seasons, three fucking seasons. And from 1980, from 1981 to 1983. And oh boy, I'm going to have a lot to cover right now in this video. <laughs> well, let's talk about this with Spider-Man. Uh, it was Web of Shadows from 2008, the video game. Well, the thing is, I am play the Xbox 360 version and the PlayStation 3 version, so those are the ones I'm reviewing, talking about the gameplay, and uh, Spider-Man. And uh, let's start with the elephant in the room. Spider-Man sucks in this game. He is a whiny emo bitch. More than he was when he put on the black suit in Spider-Man 3. And in fact, I'm just going to say, this is the most whiniest I've ever seen Spider-Man out of all the incarnations from comics and video games and cartoons and live action that exist. That I know of. And there's a lot I know of. It's, and oh boy. This level of whiny that Spider-Man does... Is absolutely fucking annoying and absurd that you don't believe that you're playing a spider. You believe we're, we're like listening to some sort of whiny asshole pretending to be spider and probably stole his costume and really should give the costume back to the real Spider Man. There's no way in hell that this is this is the legit Spider Man because I'm just gonna say I, I hate Web of Shadows. The one for Xbox 360 and also for PlayStation 3. Oh, I remember I played the handheld game of the shelf for the DS. Uh, I, oh, I have, I, oh, it was, uh, yeah, I think it was the DS. Uh, anyway, I like the handheld game of Web of Shadows because Spider-Man was a lot, maze wasn't a whiny little prick. An ungrateful one. Yeah, uh, he somehow turns the whiny bitch level up to 11 when he gets the black suit. He becomes even more irritating than whiny little bitch. Once he gets the black suit on him in the opening scene of the game. Of the second level. We are fighting Venom. And you just want to get him to shut the fuck up. Because instead of being the, the, the annoying, quirky, 
jokey Spider-Man, we get the whiny little prick version of him without his quirks. We, you know, with all we we get we get all Spidey's like drama in his personality, but without any of his humor that made him tolerable and likable too and charming too. From the like like you know Spider-Man from the comics has all of that stuff, including his sense of humor. This Spider-Man doesn't crack one joke, not even once. After he gets rid of the suit, and also even before he gets gets the suit, <laughs> the black suit, and this game after the first opening level doesn't waste any fucking time for you wanting to get to know this version of Spider Man because bam, black suit babies. That means if you want to see the fun joking Spider Man that's red and that wears red and blue tights. You know, the one we got from Spider-Man for the PS4. The best Spider-Man game ever. Since, well, well, since the, uh, well, since, well, I'm just going to say since the, uh, Nintendo 64 era. And, which, just to be honest, that, those were the best Spider-Man. The first two, the Spider-Man, I was going to say, the, I think the Spider-Man... Uh, the ninety, the 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 uh, the bef- I even saying I was saying uh, is this me the Spider-Man film since Spider-Man Two the game, video game the to me the uh, quality of Spider-Man his personality and also the swing mechanic has kind of gone a little dull, S- and this. Game Weber shouts pushed it too far. <laughs> Luckily, they didn't make a sequel of this. Oh, but they definitely wanted to. <laughs> no matter how you end the game, will be on on will be with, as the red and blue Spider-Man or the symbiote Spider-Man ends on a cliffhanger. Actually, it only ends on a cliffhanger. We ended on on the, as the black suit Spider-Man. They play the end in the picks that picks the black suit by man. You get a cliffhanger and a symbiote version, mutated version of Wolverine ready to hunt and kill Spider Man in his symbiote form. After he got rid of the symbiote. So, because he's now wanted by Shield because he was so. He really wanted to win, so it's stupid. The, and that's in. Uh, look, I in the tone of this movie feels like you know feels so feels so emo and goth level of okay. You know how you see uh, a person wearing a lot of goth and. Uh, Trying to hide. Like McGuire was in Spider Man 3 when he was going goth. That's what this film is like in a nutshell. I mean, this video game is like in a nutshell. Web of fucking shadows. Spider Man Shadow is the worst superhero game I ever played. Next to Arkham Knight. Batman Arkham Knight. Oh, yes. I said this. I'm just going to say this. I think it's the worst video game I ever played. No, wait, it's the worst video game I ever played next to Superman 64 for the Nintendo 64 title Superman. Um, I hate this game more, even though this game, the play of the controls are functional. <laughs> I feel like I'm going fucking mad <laughs> playing this game because since when does Spider-Man fight like, like a, like, a, when does he fight ever and what kind of nation has Spider-Man ever fight like Goku from the Dragon Ball Z franchise? Not the no, I'm not kidding. It's but, but in the not the black suit Spider-Man. No, if it was that one, I would say okay, that was kind of cool. 
It's the red and blue Spider-Man. He fights like Goku from the Dragon Ball Z franchise. Like he goes, like he goes, like flash, like flashlight reflex. Like you can't even see his kicks when he punches or his punch when he punches. But he's going so fast, like supersonic speed. Now, surprisingly, when it's, he's in the symbiote, the, the combat feels more believable and less absurd. No. Red and blue suit, which is fine because you would think it would either reverse the way that it would go more absurd with the black suit versus the red and blue suit. You would think it would be the opposite, but it's not. It's the other way around. <laughs> so, how's the swinging mechanic? Well, the swing mechanic is doable, but at times it feels kind of stiff but due to the lack of acrobatic animation that Spider Man pulls off in thin air. That is supposed to pull off and thin air. Because that's what he does. Show off his acrobatic skills in the comments. And also... <laughs> There's so many bad adaptations of Spider-Man. Like the first two ones was McGuire. Spider-Man movies. Even those ones showed up better acrobatic skills. More consistently than the Web of Shadows sh gives you. Oh, apparently the when he webs people up, it, it, it kind of it web the webs that the red suit gives you act so weird and like well, I would say the okay here's what the black suit does with the web mechan with the web mechanics with the web with the web uh, animation and uh the uh, combo attacks is that it doesn't really change anything except it creates more collateral damage to the stuff around you. So the mechanics pretty much the same. The only difference is that uh, when you're not in the red so you can, even though you don't move as fast, you can create less collateral damage for any moves you do. But even though in the black suit, you know, he doesn't move as fast, like supersonic speed, fast, like the red and blue suit, you will create holy mouths of collateral damage. Like, you can even kick this a car, and it'll blow up. Which, <laughs> you get to do a lot. Yeah, you get to, yeah, Spider gets to kill people. And, uh, the main promise is really kind of fucking... It feels... Okay, um... Why don't I just realize... The plot to this is... It's maximum carnage. Except instead of carnage... Instead of Cleus Cassie... We get Eddie Brock. We get Venom... For the maximum carnage storyline. <laughs> instead it's called Widow of Shadows. By Man of Shadows. And it says maximum carnage. So it says, you know the comic is this like called Spider-Man Maximum Carnage? That they also made in a video game? Well, this, I just realized that like, this probably would have been, <laughs> this, this, and, and Carnage just doesn't make a cameo at all in this. <laughs> so, Carnage doesn't exist in this continuity, really? Oh boy. So, basically what happens in the plot of, similar to the plot of Maximum Carnage, is that, him, the kind of entity, and the and his symbiote take over the entire world. And Spider-Man has to stop present to Carnage kind of Madness, even though the world's going to hell. Because I'm not kidding, the, the these this game has symbiote zombies. <laughs> I shit you not. <laughs> Symbiote zombies mean who ain't we get to just contact him with the symbiote except for Spider Man because he's like been he's kind of used to him and being some sort of immune, he's immune to it somehow because he's worn like suit before. But anyone who's like not exposed to the who has been exposed before, uh, well, gets turned into zombies, minus fucking zombies and uh, 
the basically crawl at you and crawl very fast at you and attack you like 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 about to eat and try to eat you. And later in the game, they start mutating and ha- coming out of eggs on buildings and on the streets and everywhere. Because the webs, the symbol covers the entire city at some point, and it just looks like hell. Like, <laughs> and it's right in the center of it, and what makes it more hell, what makes it really true is serving Spider-Man is, doesn't stop being a whiny little brat. A selfish one. <laughs> The movie, the game, I mean, this video game ends up opening on when he's, like, looking for Cage and MJ. And he's just, like, freaking out. He's like, where are you? Where are they? Where are they? Where are they? Oh, you know that? <laughs> oh. And that's my review on Fucking Web of Shadows. And, uh, this game fucking sucks. This guy's 0 out of 10. Fuck this game. And uh, now I'm going to talk about the series, Spider-Man Makes and Friends, and Spider-Man. Most cartoon animated shows, okay? Now, um... I'm going to talk about Spider-Man Makes and Friends first, because this is going to take less time than the other review I'm going to talk about. So, Spider-Man Makes and Friends, the problem is that this show uh, gets a 5 out of 10. It's not one of the greatest Spider-Man shows or one of the greatest shows of all time, or one of the best comic book adaptations of time. And the same goes for the other one. Spider-Man, from, that aired in 1994 to 1998. That's ran for five seasons total. And that gets a 10 out of 10. Now, I'm gonna tell you, go, get back to that one, okay? Now I'm go, going to, because right now I'm going to talk about Spider-Man as a main friend. Now, Remember how I told you this is, this is, takes the same place, kind of, as the, as another show called Spider-Man that came out the same year in 1981? Well, that's because it has the same Spider-Man and the same world. And, uh, but the, pro- see, why do I like that show more than Spider-Man's main friends? Because that show actually focused on Spider-Man and he gets main screen, he gets like, he gets, he plays an important role. And Spider-Man has been friend, he's pushed to the side after episode one. <laughs> the pilot episode when he faced the Green Goblin and performed a team, Spider-Man and his amazing friends, and he reveals his identity. After episode one, it's just all downhill from there. Because instead, Spider-Man being a key element, it's just Iceman and Star, uh, Star, Firestar. Yes, and, uh, those are main characters. Those are actually main characters. Spider-Man is main friend, even though it's called Spider-Man is main friend. Spider-Man's not even a main character, which is sad because when he's in it, it's pretty good. And he's pretty funny. But, as the episodes go on and on, he gets more, more pushed to the side into a role of the side character, as in he gets benched on the sidelines. <laughs> so that's why it says a five out of ten. If you this is a if you're a Spider-Man fan like me, then this is so it's just going to piss you the fuck off, <laughs> probably, most likely, like it did to me. And you won't want to go back to it. But as a show as a whole, if it was as a regular sh- as a show in general. It's a pretty solid show. I give it a 5 out of 10. But the Spider-Man show, I give it a 0 out of 10. Eat me. Those who love this show. Now, I'm going to talk about Spider-Man. From that year to 1994 to 1998. Tell Spider-Man. Oh, this gives a 5 out of 10 easily. Way better show than Spider-Man's main friend. However, it is a worse representation of Spider-Man. <laughs> because here's the thing. This actor, when he's giving like, when he's giving, when he says his lines right, like Spider-Man heroic, instead of just heroic, but, uh, like, but, uh, he, 
sounds like a legit Spider-Man. He could play a legit Spider-Man. And I think season one gets him the best, gives him the, he gets, he gets the best delivery in the first season. But, uh, after that, it doesn't really quite redeem itself his, until season five, when he, uh, when he's, uh, it seems like people forgot to tell him how to approach these lines uh, sometimes. Because when he gets angry, it doesn't, in, in late, at least in the late, in the later seasons, not in the first season, in the later seasons, except for season five. The season between season five and one. Oh, Spider-Man. It sounds like he's... Well... It sounds like he's a little... You know, uh... Off-key. Like, and also the writing is kind of weird when he gets mad. Like, he... When he's, like, in Black Suit Spider-Man... When he's in the Black Suit Spider-Man... And he's, like, trying to kill Shocker... And he's, like, hunting him... And Shock is trying to run from Spider-Man, the Black Suit Spider-Man, and the symbiote storyline of the show. He delivers a sign, Shocker! You cannot escape me! I'll hunt you to the ends of the earth! <laughs> he says it like that. And it sounds like he's like being so overdramatic intentionally, but he doesn't sound like a person that's angry and wants commit violence on someone, he sounds like a person that's legit, this, this legit doesn't know how to sound like an angry person, so he's just overcooking it with his lines, and, and, uh, and that would be okay if they didn't have him for season two and three and f four, if they didn't have him that would be okay if they didn't have him like they did in season two and three and season four have majority of his lines be written like that and deliver like that. <laughs> Most of the times of the series, he's for the rest of the series, uh, which is a good chunk of the series for five seasons, he's out of the black suit. <laughs> so I mean, it wasn't, but he's, and he says the lines pretty much the same. It's like, what are you doing to him? I'm wondering. This is the best way you could come up with. And, uh, because here's the thing, season five and, uh, season one of the show gets a 10 out of 10 solid. Because most of the time in season one and season five, for all the entire season of those seasons, He's written more like a uh, chill ass uh, um, uh, in his uh, um, he, he, he's written like when he's like, in a co like he was in the comics more like as he's more jokey and less he's more jokey and fun and uh, kind of relaxed but also kind of someone that's dealing with a lot of stress and trying to manage to uh, succeed at Balancing both lives as Peter Parker and as Spider-Man. And season one and season five throughout this, those seasons. But in the other seasons of the same series, it's the reverse of the definition of reverse in every way. <laughs> and sometimes, very occasionally, he will act like himself. So basically, Web of Shadows, Spider-Man, and Spider-Man from this show are the most whiny fucking ungrateful bitches of Spider-Man from Peter Parker's, <laughs> of all the Peter Parker's incarnation throughout the years. Even more whiny than Spider-Man from One More Day. And more ungrateful bastard. <laughs> yeah. Look, I don't say I hate one more but uh, Spider was a little god like me. Yeah, I would say he was whining, but he, you know, it was a reason why he was whining in that story. And I would say at least there, there was a reason why he was whining that story. I'm not saying I would hate it or like it. I had to revisit again that story one more day. The point is, as much as he might have been whining and annoyed, there was a reason for it. 
He was losing his mother figure, Aunt May. And one more day. In a way, way too serious to di- make a dis- deal with some fistle because her, her lines, uh, her, her heart rate uh, is going. Even though, like, you know, he has the money now because Sack has chains of heart and will pay for and cover the insurance. The doctors are saying that she's pretty much not going to guarantee, almost guaranteed not going to pull through. Okay, I understand why he was uh, not like him acting like no. That makes sense. He's like, he's always lose something very important. Too. And Spider Man, well, Shadows and Spider Man show called Spider Man that aired from nineteen ninety four to nineteen ninety eight. I don't know why he's acting like that. Like, why is he being un- such an ungrateful, annoying? Unlikable prick. I don't know, and I'm gonna act like I have the answers. Out. I just don't know. My guess is, if I have to take a guess, a wild guess, I guess that because the race didn't know what else to do, so they just like say, say "Fuck it, let's write con his personality and uh, this make shit up while we're at it." For Web of Shadows and also for the Spider-Man show for the 90s. That's a cartoon show. <laughs> that, makes, that just makes sense. Let's take the easy way out. <laughs> so yeah. This Spider-Man show that's in 1994 gets a 5 out of 10 on a show as his own thing. And it's not a bad country, not a bad show in general. It's like, much like the, my Spider-Man's major friend, it's not a bad show or a bad country in general. Um, 